Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, we're going to be talking about how two plus two never equals four. And in the process, you're going to learn to think like a fundamental scientist rather than a normal person. Now, this video is going to start out with some simple examples comparing fruits. But stick with me, because as the video progresses, it will get more and more technical. If you watch this video all the way until the end, it is very likely you will never look at the world the same way again. For this video, I built a 4-bit calculator and a 2-bit calculator on breadboards using individual transistors. This is to show how computers add numbers using binary. I also have a condenser microphone on a breadboard, which is hooked up to the oscilloscope. And this is how you can see what I am saying on the oscilloscope. Now, most people take 2 plus 2 equaling 4 as a fundamental truth. However, in this video, we're going to be looking at how numbers are represented in physical space. The number 4 can be in my brain. The number 4 can be an analog waveform traveling through the air. The number 4 can be represented on this digital oscilloscope. And it can be represented all of these other ways. Math is actually an abstraction of reality. And in order to solve difficult problems in math and science, asking whether something is functionally equivalent is more powerful and more accurate than asking whether something is equal. At the Global Science Network, we focus on three main projects. First, solving the world's energy problems with a novel renewable energy technology. Second, solving unified field theory. And third, creating non-biological human consciousness. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in working on, check out our website, gsnetwork.com, subscribe to our email list there, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Two apples plus two oranges equals four oranges. Actually, that's not right. Two oranges plus two oranges equals four oranges. Actually, that's not right. You can see that these oranges are much larger and are of a different type than these oranges. Now, how about these four oranges equal these same four oranges? Maybe? Let me ask that question a different way. Why does this orange not equal this orange? I didn't cut the camera away or anything like that. Let me ask that question again. Why does this orange not equal this orange? Now you might have noticed that time went by. Let's just say that 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds went by. What is different in this orange in 0.1 seconds? Well, this orange is actually made up of about 10 moles of atoms, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen mostly. And all of these atoms are actually continuously changing their micro state. So in 0.1 seconds, you actually have 6.02 times 10 to the 24th atoms that all changed their position. And that is a lot of atoms to change their position to say that it's equal. Now, another thing to notice about this orange is that we can see it, right? It's lit up. And what that means is that there's an extremely large number of photons continuously bombarding the surface of this orange. Some of the photons are reflected and some of the photons are being absorbed. The photons that are being absorbed are actually adding heat. Now let's look at how this orange is changing over time. Here is time-lapse footage over the course of 94 days. It becomes apparent that the orange is continuously changing and is not equal to itself as time passes. Now I can quickly think of three reasons why this orange's position changes relative to other objects. Reason number one, because the Earth is rotating. So as the Earth rotates, this orange actually changes its position a great deal in just 0.1 seconds. Reason number two is because the Earth is orbiting the Sun. And as the Earth moves along this orbit, the position of this orange also changes relative to the Sun. Reason number three, the universe is expanding. Most astrophysicists believe that the universe is expanding, and due to this expansion, objects that are separated by a great distance are actually traveling away from each other at a faster and faster rate. So if you actually go about 10 billion light years away, this orange is actually traveling at the speed of light away from other objects. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. 
So that means in 0.1 seconds, this orange will have traveled over 18,000 miles away from those other objects. Another thing to notice is that it's no longer attached to the tree. And that means that all of the cells inside this orange are actually decaying. So that means that the DNA and the RNA within those cells are actually decomposing. And that damage is actually information loss. If you can think of other things that change in 0.1 seconds, leave them in the comments. Right here, we have a four bit calculator that is built on four individual breadboards. Each breadboard contains one full adder with the output of the full adder creating one bit. Now you'll notice that we actually have five bits as the output because on the last full adder, there's one carry bit that creates the fifth bit. For the inputs, we have four bits and four bits. The inputs are represented by these LED lights. If the LED light is off, that is a zero in binary. If the LED light is on, that is a one in binary. So you can see here we have 0010 plus 0010 equals 00100. And what this is showing is that two plus two equals four in binary. Or it just means we have a breadboard that has some LEDs that are on and some LEDs that are off. Now over here, we have a two-bit calculator. It is built in a similar way as the four-bit calculator, except it only has two bits, which means it has two full adders going across the breadboards. Now you'll notice that the LED lights are blinking. They're blinking because it's hooked up to a 555 timer. This allows the circuit to continuously calculate two plus two, two plus two, two plus two, which is represented by one zero plus one zero equals one zero zero. Now the question to ask yourself is, does the binary representation of four, which is zero zero one zero zero on this four bit calculator equal the same as the analog four that is displayed on the digital oscilloscope? The answer is absolutely not. This 8-bit oscilloscope is recording at 50 million samples per second with 20 milliseconds per division, which means the recording length is 0.28 seconds. To make this waveform, the oscilloscope is capturing 14 million data points along the x-axis. And because the oscilloscope is 8-bit, it has 256 points along the y-axis. This means that the oscilloscope display of four is being represented by 3.584 billion bits compared to the calculator that I built that only has an output of five bits. The analog waveform of me saying four contains way more information than the five bit binary representation of four. When I say four, even though there are over seven billion people on the planet, a lot of people can distinguish that it is me speaking just by saying something simple like four. Now, even the oscilloscope's representation of four is not equal or even functionally equivalent to the analog waveform of four. This is because the on-off state of billions of transistors is physically different than what the analog waveform is. In physical space, the analog waveform is sound. Sound is a disturbance to gas particles that are interacting with each other over time. Now this might get you to think, what is the digital resolution of real space if the universe was a digital simulation? The Planck time is the smallest known meaningful unit of time. The Planck length is the smallest known meaningful unit of distance. The diameter of a hydrogen atom is approximately 1.1 angstroms. Really small, right? Well, the diameter of a hydrogen atom is 6.5 trillion trillion Planck lengths, which is 6.5 septillion Planck lengths. Now we would need to know what type of fundamental particles in space hold discrete information to fully answer the question of what is the resolution of real space? This concept gets into the heart of information theory which describes information as energy. This is important because in order to power life and complete computations, what we really need is information. 
determining the smallest unit of information that we can use to read, write, and store information is actually really important. Consequently, we will be talking about this in detail in future videos. A similar concept to math being an abstraction of reality is the treachery of images. And what this is, is in 1929, a French painter named René Marguerite painted a picture of a pipe. It was a painting on a canvas. And below it, in French, he wrote, this is not a pipe. So you might imagine people touring an art gallery saying, oh, look at what this is a picture of, and look at what this is a picture of. And here is a picture of a pipe, and it says, this is not a pipe. And his point was, this is just a representation of a pipe. It is not an actual pipe. You can't use it as a pipe. It's just an image on a canvas. And this is similar to what mathematics is. It's just an abstraction of reality. If you asked a good physicist in 1929, what is this painting? They should tell you some variation of canvas and paint interacting with the fundamental forces of the universe. Not the most exciting person to bring to an art gallery. If you ask a good physicist today, what is two plus two? They should tell you something similar. It is simply matter interacting with the fundamental forces of the universe. Now this matter is not equal to any other matter. When comparing matter in space and time, the better question to ask is whether it's functionally equivalent. Now this may seem like a subtle point, but it is actually really important whenever you're trying to do something like create non-biological human consciousness. Chemistry is actually my favorite subject, and chemists never say reactants equal products. You have reactants, and you have products, and you have an arrow going from one to the other. This arrow represents the direction of the reaction. What is going to take place depends on a whole bunch of other factors. You have enthalpies, entropies, internal energies, Gibbs free energy, and all of these things combined are going to determine how the reactants turn into the products over time. Now, whenever you are seeing two oranges plus two oranges doesn't equal four oranges, you might have been saying to yourself, well, the quantity of two oranges plus the quantity of two oranges equals the quantity of four oranges. Well, this is actually still wrong, as the term quantity of four oranges can never be represented in the same space, matter, or time that makes it equal to the term quantity of four oranges, which would be in different space, matter, or time. However, quantity is actually interesting and different in another way as well. Now you might say that the quantity of $20 is equal to the quantity of $20. However, you can have a $20 bill or you can have 2,000 pennies, and these are not computationally equivalent. If you are paying for something that costs $20, you can just hand someone a $20 bill and they know right away that you paid $20. If you pay with 2,000 pennies, you're gonna have to count all the pennies and then they're gonna have to count all of the pennies. So the computational time for us as humans to compute $20 is actually significantly different. And this is actually really important whenever you're trying to do something like create non-biological human people. And this is because the differences in quantity is kind of like the differences in structure in different people's brains. So it's actually going to be hard to look at the structure of a brain and just inherently know what information is within that structure. Are you equal to yourself? I think it's pretty clear now that you could come up with a whole bunch of reasons why you are a different person than you were a few seconds ago. However, it's important to realize that you are similar enough to yourself that you continue to experience your identity. One of the goals of the Global Science Network is to create non-biological humans. Whenever we create a non-biological neuron, it will not be the same neuron as the biological neuron. However, if replicated properly, it will allow the person to have the same equivalent experience. Now in future videos, we will talk about, well, what actually happens if you replace one biological neuron with a non-biological neuron? And you know, how does that change a person's identity, whether it does change a person's identity, but that's for future videos. We can't take something that is analog and make it digital. Likewise, we can't take something like a neuron, which is integrating information from thousands of different inputs and make it digital. The information needs to have the same level of detail and propagate through the entire logical network in a similar way. 
Now, if we were going to do a mathematical proof to prove that two plus two equals four, we would actually be using the principles of equality. These are things like reflexivity, symmetry, transivity, and substitution. In this case, we would be using reflexivity, which is basically saying x equals x. And this is the fundamental concept that we are disagreeing with in this video. We are saying that x does not equal x, and therefore the mathematical proof is invalid. In math, science, and engineering, we use principles similar to the principles of equality to solve thousands of mathematical problems. Basically, we solve thousands of mathematical problems and they give us a college degree. But when do we actually ever go back and question these fundamental concepts? Is it actually important to question these fundamental concepts? Should we take them at face value and say, oh yeah, everything's equal? Or should we actually understand how things are represented in physical space because that is the world that we live in? Let's look at the definition of equal to make sure we did not define the problem wrong. Equal is the same measure, quantity, amount, or number as another. Identical in mathematical value or logical denotation. My point is, if you look at these mathematical values or logical denotations in physical space, you will see that the physical space can never be represented in a way that is equal to any other physical space. And therefore, the definition is inherently invalid. Mathematics is actually just an abstraction of reality. Now this abstraction is interesting and it can be a useful tool, but it is not an absolute or fundamental truth of the world. So what is my point of making this video saying that two plus two does not equal four? Am I saying that there are no fundamental or absolute truths in the world, so why bother thinking scientifically? No, that is not what I am saying. My point is that because time, space, and matter are all different, two things can never actually be the same. Now we may say this equals that, but there are an extremely large number of assumptions that go into that statement. So to think that it is a fundamental truth or an absolute truth is incorrect. Almost all truth is bounded truth, and that is something that is really important to realize when thinking scientifically. I will be making videos showing exactly how I built this 4-bit calculator and this 2-bit calculator. Also, I am trying to turn this 2-bit calculator into the simplest computer in the world to show how computers work in the simplest way possible. I will also be making a video about this condenser microphone being amplified by a single transistor to be displayed on an oscilloscope. And this is actually a really important circuit to understand because it's the basics for how a transistor works as an amplifier. So look out for that video coming up. Hopefully I have convinced you that two plus two does not equal four. If that's the case, please give this video a thumbs up. If that's not the case, that's all right. Just go ahead and give this video a thumbs down four times. And I would appreciate that as well. Thanks for watching. All right, do you remember that orange that we kept talking about and talking about? Well, we're actually going to now turn that orange into a human.